Boom blast. And we are live. This is the Wrap It Up on Blast Raps post game show. My name is Sheldon Alexander. Thank you for joining me once again. This episode of Wrap It Up is brought to you by Clean Cuts Barbershop, 2013 Danforth Avenue in Toronto. Clean Cuts, the multicultural barbers that will always keep you fresh for any and all occasions. So go see Skip and the crew, and as a wise man once said, tell them that I sent you. Check them out on Instagram at cleancutsto or give them a call 416-917-4833 to book your appointment now. Well, Raptor fans, how we doing on this Friday night? Shout out to everybody tuning in. Shout out to the Twitter crew always tuning in. Click on that link on Twitter. You'll end up in Periscope. You can send your questions there. Tune in on Instagram. We take your questions there as well. Shout out to the Instagram regulars. I see all you guys there fired up on this Friday night as the Raptors go down 121-99, or sorry, 121-119 to the Houston Rockets and James Harden, of course. Um, What a crazy game. That was a crazy game of runs. There are 20-point leads, and the Raptors were back. Cut it to single digits, then Rockets would be up by 20 again. Cut it back to single digits. This is such a crazy game, and I'm excited to do this live because I know that people are fired up. I'm interested to to hear what the people have to say right off the bat about that game because it finish. The crazy finish might have, you know, the crazy finish might have made it a little more exciting or even more frustrating on the other hand, you know what I mean? But again, shouts to the people that will be listening tomorrow in the podcast because, you know, we're here for you guys too. But in terms of the game, Raptors did not come out well in this game at all. And I think what happened was they were so focused on James Harden And they did a great job on him early. But what it did was the rest of the team, like I felt like there were just open drives, open layups. Eric Gordon was getting like easy layups pretty much the whole game until as the game progressed, it was open looks for guys like Austin Rivers, open looks for guys like Eric Gordon, and they were missing them, right? That's how the Raptors really got back into the game. But early... Those guys were driving into the lane. Those guys were getting easy buckets. And the Rockets came out gunning, and it wasn't even James Harden. And that, I think, is a sad part if you're the Raptors. Because you did a good job on Harden. You did an all right job on Harden. But you let the other guys do their thing. And the the reason why that's a problem is because the Raptors bench, where I think the game was lost, to me, the game was lost in the first half, the first time Nick Nurse went to the bench. The first time Nick Nurse went to the bench, the Rockets were up, but that lead extended to 18 points. And C.J. Miles is on the court, Monroe is on the court. That line of Monroe, C.J., Fred, Norm, and I think it was OG, they just got run out of the gym, and it was terrible. And by the time you brought back in Kawhi Leonard and Kyle Lowry, it was an 18-point lead. And that's just... Now you're spending the the rest of the game, the entire rest of the game, trying to get back in into it, and now you expend so much energy to get there, to make it a whatever, a five-point game, or you know a six-point game, a seven-point game, whatever, but you just can't get over the hump. Do you know what I mean? Does that make sense? Like, they played so well to get back in the game and have these crazy runs, and I think with this game, you're really starting to see who the dudes are that you will be able to trust come playoff time, right? Who are the dudes that you're riding with come playoff time? Because, hey, as much as we make fun of the games against, like, the Bulls or the Suns or the Grizzlies and all that stuff when Kawhi Leonard's not playing and all that, those games are cool. But those are the games for C.J. Miles to go crazy in. Those are the games for Greg Monroe to get off. Those are the games for those dudes, right? Those guys don't... They don't need to be in in crunch time minutes or in big time minutes in a game in Houston when, you know, it's it's a big boy game. It's time to put your big boy pants on. And you really get to see how valuable someone like Danny Green is, right? Danny Green's out here guarding James Harden, and yet when you go to the flip side, remember, you're guarding James Harden. And James Harden still came away and scored his 35. 
He scored 35 on 9 of 25 shooting, okay? I'm going to give that a dub to Danny Green and the Raptors for the defense they played on James Harden. Because that's 35 points, but that's 35 points the hard way. He was 15 for 15 from the free throw line, 2 of 13 from 3. Again, 9 of 25 field goals for James Harden. He wasn't the problem in this game. To me, it was everything else. And, you know, Kenneth Fareed was all over the glass. 21 points, 14 rebounds. And I know the easy thing is to to get mad at Serge. I'm not here to get mad at Serge. Serge, 12 and 14. Serge was basically the lone big guy playing big guy minutes for the majority of the game. Serge is going to get tired, right? All around, I think there's enough blame to go around for the Toronto Raptors. And, you know, that crazy comeback, and I don't even know how to describe that crazy comeback because it was just really, really odd, <laughs> right? Like there's a minute left and all of a sudden Kawhi's knocking down threes, Siakam's knocking down threes, Danny Green, and the Raptors had a chance somehow to tie this game on a last second play and pick and roll to Kawhi. Kawhi takes a three. I don't know what the play call was. I don't know what if they were trying to go for the win instead of the tie. I don't know what that was, but that was a, a horrible play call and horrible execution by Kawhi Leonard at the end of that game. But again, that's probably just making it more frustrating because the game was lost well before that if you're the Toronto Raptors. There were just too many times they had to come all the way back and win that game. And the messed up part is when you look at it, you lose 121-119. The Raptors won three of the four quarters in this game, right? You lost the first quarter 33-20. to And then after that, second quarter, Raptors win 41-37. Third quarter, Raptors win 28-26. Fourth quarter, Raptors win 30-25. to You're right there in the game. And... At the end of the day, there's so many things that are going to come up and reasons why people think Kawhi is going to stay, Kawhi is going to go. These are one of those games where Kawhi goes 11 for 19, 32 points, 7 rebounds, 5 assists, 2 steals in his first game back after taking a week off. And now, where's everybody else? Right? Danny Green's here and shows up. Danny Green had a great game. 22 points from Danny Green, 6 threes while also guarding James Harden and, again, making James Harden shoot a terrible percentage in this game? I don't know. We're getting to the point where the the back end of this season for the Raptors is going to be about role definition, okay? Certain guys got to know their role, what kind of shots they take, when they take certain shots. And the thing that I want to say is... The reason why I'm saying Nick Nurse and the, and the I don't think Nick Nurse had a really good game. Obviously, at the end of the game, you had to draw up a play. You could have drawn up a play to tie, and then you just regroup and go to overtime, right? And then instead, it's this, you know, kill the clock, try to get a screen to get James Harden on Kawhi and let him go one-on-one -on -one and shoot a terrible three. I don't know. That made no sense. But here's the thing. In these big boy games, Nick Nurse is still trying to run the bench mob as if, it's, as if it's the bench mob. And you know what? After 51 games, the bench mob doesn't exist anymore. You cannot continue to play the full bench as a unit in big boy games because it's not working. It didn't work against Boston. It didn't work against San Antonio. Like, go back and find the big boy game where the bench unit as a whole played really well. If you notice, one of the runs that the bench made came with Danny Green and Kawhi Leonard still in the game with OG, Norm, and Fred, right? Like, this is where the, the team made a run, and I think you got to just stagger your starters' minutes with the bench instead of trying to play a full bench unit at the same time. Because what did you get from CJ Miles? What did you get from Greg Monroe? They were just on the court, like seven minutes and somehow managed to be a minus 11 right og minus six cj miles minus five van fleet minus two right and the only reason why van fleet isn't more of a minus was because he had that solid run with Kawhi, with danny green or even siakam my point is with some of the starters 
got to stop playing the bench unit as a full unit in these big boy games because it's not the same. They don't have the same chemistry. It's not the same squad as it was last year. And far too often, it just becomes the Raptors as a whole just become, well, we'll pass it to Kawhi, see what Kawhi does. Maybe he can save us. That's what happened, right? No? And the other thing, too, that is a big, big factor, Kyle Lowry. Kyle Lowry really, really struggled in this game. Kyle Lowry is going to get named to the All-Star team as a Raptors second All-Star, and he definitely deserves it, right? He's second in the league in assists on a team that is, what, in the top three in the entire NBA, but has been leading the Eastern Conference for the majority of the first half. So Kyle Lowry deserves to be an All-Star, right? I'm not even mad at that. But in terms of what this team needs from Kyle Lowry, this team needs Kyle Lowry to give them a minimum of 15 every night, but he needs to have the ability of getting over 20. And in these big boy games, that's when you really need to see who your all-stars are. And that's where you need Kyle Lowry to not go two for nine and one for six from three. It's unacceptable. That can't happen. It can't happen. And yes, Kyle Lowry had two really good games, right? He's coming off two good games, but that's not with Kawhi in the lineup. But I will say this. Kyle played two good games and he was playing aggressive. I will say early on in this game, he came out and he shot the ball aggressively. He was taking those deep threes aggressively. They just weren't going down. He was driving to the basket and he just couldn't get going. He couldn't get a rhythm at all. Even that three he hit that they ended up taking off the board right? That was kind of a fluke. No? I don't know. I'm seeing a lot of people in the chat, and I saw this on Twitter too, a lot of people talking about Jonas Valanciunas. Guys, like, let's relax. Jonas Valanciunas might have made a bit of a difference in this game, but come on. He's covering Kenneth Fareed, right? It's just a bad matchup. It's a bad matchup. Yes, JV would have given you better minutes than Greg Monroe, for sure. I definitely agree with that. But with the guys on the court that the Toronto Raptors have, with Kawhi Leonard and the two other All-Stars that we're supposed to have, you should win that game. Bottom line, Kenneth Reed just outworked, just outworked the Raptors. And the interesting part, the interesting comparison I'm going to make here is Pascal Siakam. And I've been saying this for a while on Twitter, and if you follow me on Twitter, you know what I'm saying because I say it all the time, and if you listen to the podcast, I say it all the time as well. Pascal Siakam needs to fall back and chill on the ISO, the ISO situations. Like, he doesn't need, like, that's not his game. That's not what this team needs, that he's not there yet in his career. Pascal Siakam is successful at the offensive end. We know he's an amazing defender. No one's doubting that. He's a crazy defender. But on offense... He gets his points from hustle plays. He gets his points from running the floor. Kyle Lowry's going to find him all the time. You even saw Kawhi find him a couple times, right? That's how Pascal Siakam's going to get his points. Too many times in this game, when the Raptors were making a run, somehow it became Siakam trying to post someone up, and then he's just settling for a very tough shot that misses. Or Siakam trying to drive to the basket and shoot a tough lay-in that misses right? And I know people are saying, oh, well, that's just a missed shot. But here's the thing. It's the NBA, right? Every single NBA player, every time down the floor, can drive to the basket and chuck up a difficult shot and hope to get fouled. Every player in the NBA. So my point with Siakam is, you don't need to do that, right? Play within the offense, play to your strengths, run the floor, Get on the offensive rebound train. Get your points that way. I'm telling you, if you go back and pay attention to the to what was going on in this this game, and you watch when Siakam was missing, and you look at look at his stat line, a great stat line for Siakam: 22 points, 12 rebounds. He played great. Nine of 15 shooting. Right, that's six misses. I guarantee you, at least four of those six misses are Siakam going one on one with somebody and missing a tough lay-in right? My point is just stick to 
like look at what Fareed did. Fareed's not doing anything out of the ordinary. Fareed's just playing within himself. He's driving to the basket hard. He's being an offensive rebounder. He's being active. He's rolling to the paint, and they're finding him for layups. 8 of 11 shooting for Fareed. Again, 21 points, 14 rebounds off the scrap heap, meaning Kenneth Fareed was available for anybody to pick up. And somehow he's on the Rockets and starting and contributing and beating the Toronto Raptors. Let me go into the chat and get some comments here. I'll start on Twitter. Shouts to the Twitter crew. Uh, let's see. First comment says, destroyed by Kenneth Fareed, a guy who barely played in the NBA this year. It's true. At the end of the day, the Raptors don't have any excuses. Like You, you got to know that your team's fully healthy now. You know what you're going to get from Kawhi. And so it's on everyone else to make sure they're able to play at a level that matches that. And the bench did not do that today for the Toronto Raptors, right? Norman Powell finished with 10 points, but Norm had a rough game. Norm had a bunch of just weird turnovers. He was kind of out of control. He kind of looked like last year's Norm a little bit. But I feel like it's because he was trying to do too much, right? I think Norm, like... When he senses the bench mob struggling, he'll just try to do too much and take over and kind of be that dominant scorer for the bench mob. And that's not how that unit needs to play. That unit needs to be moving the ball. That unit needs to have Fred getting in the paint and kicking it out and swinging it and ball movement and getting someone open looks. And that was not happening in this game. Fred Van Fleet had a very bad game. He did not play well in this game off the bench at all. And the other thing I want people to think about, what happened to DeLon? No minutes for DeLon in this game. He was the only Raptor that didn't play. Even McCaw got in for one minute. But I wonder just what the decision was behind that. You know, like CJ got a look playing in this game. And I find that kind of weird. Like, I get that CJ Miles played a bit better. He found his shot. Cool. But again, I'll say this, and I'll say this time and time again. C.J. Miles is a one-dimensional player, right? So if he's not hitting threes, he's not doing anything else for you. Meanwhile, I feel like DeLon Wright is one of those guys where when he comes in with the bench unit, he can at least move the ball. He can apply pressure. He's playing solid defense. There's just different ways that DeLon Wright can affect the game that I think delon and fred plus we also know delon and fred have that chemistry right but my thing is when you bring in delon right there's multiple ways that he can affect the game even if he's not scoring where cj miles is just like okay he's not playing defense he's not you know playmaking i don't know i just find it i just find it weird it was just a weird a weird game altogether and again the swings in this game were so crazy I don't know. I'm I'm kind of all over the place because I don't even understand what I just watched because I thought that game was just crazy. Uh, more comments here. Let's stick in uh, stick on Twitter. Someone says I'm starting to doubt Nick Nurse Nick Nurse as a head coach. So many missed opportunity, lack of preparation. I'm not starting to doubt Nick Nurse. It's not what I'm saying at all. I don't want people to take my critique of Nick Nurse and I'm you doing air quotes but like to me Nick Nurse just you know he's a first year coach you got to get used to making certain decisions right you got to get used to adjusting making different adjustments and you saw one of the things he tried to do when Monroe and CJ struck well CJ still played in second half but what he tried to do was he tried to go super small and he didn't bring in Monroe in the second half instead OG got some minutes at the five and it didn't really work, but it bought the Raptors some time because basically you're just trying to buy time so that Kawhi and Danny Green could rest up and Pascal could rest up and come back in the game and hopefully try to win it. And hey, that almost happened. Somehow that almost happened. I don't know. More comments. Harden is the worst flopper in the NBA, worse than LeBron, and he pushes off on every drive. This is very true. It was funny to watch James Harden and kind of some of the tricks of the trade that he does. There are a couple possessions there. I want to say one on McCaw for sure. Another one I think was on Norm or OG. But when Harden pulls up to shoot the three, you can tell there's some times where he's not even actually trying to shoot to score. 
he's trying to shoot to get to the foul line, right? And once a defender, if you don't have your hands straight up, he's like coming right in and trying to shoot the ball so that your hand is going to hit his forearm on the shot. Even if you're still, right? It's just, it's just James Hart. He gets that respect from the refs. It was funny to see them call traveling twice on Kawhi Leonard and then, you know, James Harden basically travels at least three or four times every game. No call. But, again, it's it's the refs in the NBA. James Harden's a superstar. He's going to get those calls. No problem. No problems there. James Harden, he's in a tough spot. And what he's been able to do, the wins that he's been able to get with this depleted roster... Like, think about what James Harden's dealing with, right? So now he improved to what? 22 straight games with at least 30 points? Okay. James Harden is, he scored 35 tonight. Second leading scorer was Eric Gordon, okay? Their other starters, Austin Rivers, who was bought out by Washington, no? Kenneth Fareed, who's off the scrap heap. I love me some P.J. Tucker. P.J. Tucker played a great game, especially in the first half. He was a pivotal one in in stretching the lead in the first half. But still, at the end of the day, it's P.J. Tucker. He had 18 points in this game. If you're the Raptors, that can't happen. That's just falling asleep on defense, right? He hit four threes. After the first two, stop sagging off him that much, right? I don't know, man. Someone says, Kawhi is human, my guy. He can't play 48 minutes. I'm aware of that. I know that. Not asking Kawhi to play 48 minutes. I mean, he played 39 in this game, and that's a lot. But dude's not getting much help. He is not getting much help. And it sucks because the Raptors made this crazy comeback. I don't even know how to get them to to that point where it was a last-second shot, and then now... People are going to focus on that last second play by Kawhi and the bad execution and now turn back to this narrative of Kawhi not being clutch and yada, yada, yada. This sat in the third. That's not why you lost the game. It's not. Did you have a chance to win it? If you if you hit a three there, maybe you run a play. Maybe you run a play for Danny Green, the guy that has six threes in the game. It just It, it was a weird play call at the very end. Especially when you know that the Rockets, you know, for the most part, he has P.J. Tucker who's going to try to fight over whatever screen for the majority of that clock. Like, it was going to just be a tough play. But the Raptors lose. Not a good look at all. Bad performance there. I actually thought, and I tweeted before the game, I tweeted that the Raptors are going to run the Rockets out of the gym. When, in fact, the Rockets almost ran the Raptors out of the gym. Right? Lots of funny things going on, though, because... The other thing to remember is heading into this game, one of the sports books put out the number that James Harden's over under for points scored in this game was 42 and a half, I think is what it closed at by the time the game started. And we were laughing about it at work. I was saying, like, that's the lock of the year. He's going to get under. Like, he's not going to, like, he's not going to come out and score 61 on the Raptors. It's just not a thing. The Raptors have too many good defenders. Once he gets, if he got to like 35 in the first half or something, they're putting Kawhi on him. But Kawhi didn't even spend that much time on James Harden. It was Danny Green. And I don't even think that Danny Green did a poor job. I don't think that James Harden is the reason why the Raptors lost this game. I think the Raptors losing this game was self-inflicted. They were just outworked. They lost the points in the paint battle. Their offense stalled for the majority of the first half. And they would just have these like quick 10-0 runs. I don't know comments on instagram here lots of stuff going on so i'm trying to scroll back to the beginning here to read some of these comments wow there are a lot of comments here shout out to you guys because i really appreciate it especially on this friday night where i know people could be out you know having having a few pops or something like that but instead you're here with me and i appreciate that uh let's see here someone says Nah, dude, come on. No more excuses for these guys. Hey, I'm not... There's no excuses to be made. That's a terrible performance by the Raptors. Not a good look at all. The one thing I'll give them, they didn't just pack it in like they did in San Antonio. They at least kept playing and and 
multiple times fought back from 20 point deficits or at least from 15 plus point deficits to cut it to under single digits so i don't know uh let's see Farid and tucker were getting easy shots it's true all pj tucker's threes that he hit were wide open looks Farid was basically just getting light layups at the basket poor surge i mean Serge isn't at the point of his career still where he's going to give you 34 minutes and it's going to be 34 like full on hard fought offensive glass. Do you know what I mean? Like Serge is going to get tired, but still Serge battled, not mad at Serge. Uh, someone said, man's just played like ass. We're not built for the finals, not built for the East finals. Here's the thing. I don't think Masai is delusional. I think Masai watches these games and he starts to see and you start to pay attention and you're going to know, like you, you get the feeling that, okay, playoff times are going to roll around and you know that Kawhi is going to be there. Danny Green has shown the fact that most often than not, Danny Green's going to be there. He's ready, right? But when you look at the rest of the team, it's almost a crapshoot, right? If Siakam is focused and Siakam is doing Siakam things, meaning running the floor, being active. He can easily get to 15, 20 points a night, right? I mean, that's why we, you guys have him talking about all-star game instead of Surge. While I keep saying, you know, Surge is putting up big boy numbers as well. But anyways, you need to find out who's going to be the second guy after Kawhi Leonard. That's all it's going to come down to. Because let's be serious. At certain points when that game was at 15 points, 14 points, whatever, Kawhi was hitting ridiculous shots to keep them close. Driving to the basket, getting fouled, having them not call fouled. It was ridiculous. But not a good look for the Raps. Bad loss in Houston. Let's continue with some more comments. Someone says, uh, Jin on uh, Instagram says, Monroe is so garbage. <laughs> I'm not going to call the man garbage. He didn't play well tonight. It's not a good matchup for him, right? He's going to get the Nene minutes. If Nene's in the game and Nene only played seven minutes, so Monroe only played seven minutes. Kenneth Fareed is not a good matchup for Greg Monroe. So Monroe is not trash. This is just a horrible matchup for him where he can't. He basically can't play in this game because he's not going to guard Kenneth Fareed. And you know what, guys? Newsflash. JV can't guard Kenneth Fareed either. So, just saying. Someone says, game was lost because Danny was on Harden. My guy. I'm not sure what game you were watching, but I do not think that is the case. There's no way I'm blaming Danny Green guarding James Harden as a reason for the loss. Because James Harden, again, shot 9 of 25 in this game. 2 of 13 from 3. The only reason he got to 35 points was because he took way more shots and was 15 for 15 from the line. James Harden's going to get to the line. His whole run now is based on him getting to the line. I don't know if you guys have seen the stat, but basically if you removed two point two pointers from James Harden's scoring average, again, two pointers, meaning everything that's not a free throw or a three pointer, right? So you're removing dunks, lay-ins, floaters, all that. If you remove two pointers from James Harden's scoring average, he would still be putting up about 23 points per game this season. Think about how ridiculous that is, right? So now go back and think about how he got to 35 points tonight. He got to 35 points on 9 of 25 shooting and 15 of 15 from the free throw line. That to me sounds like Danny Green made him work hard. Just my opinion. I could be wrong. Another comment says, we need JV back. Again, yes, it'd be great to have Jonas Valanciunas back, but he doesn't make the difference, I think, that we think he does. It's just an easy excuse all the time when the Raptors lose to point at, even they said on the broadcast, they're like, oh, no DeLon, that was weird. And it's like, yes, it was weird, but that's not why you lost. Like, you could have lost this game with the guys that were in the lineup. It's almost like a cop-out excuse, right? Uh, let's see what else is going on here. If this game doesn't have Masai getting on the phone, we are less than 30 games away from losing Kawhi Leonard. I mean, 
this is where things get interesting, right? This is where things get interesting. The first 50 games of the year were basically, hey, how's Kawhi? Is Kawhi healthy? Are we sure Kawhi's healthy? Is he going to play hard? Is he going to play a lot? All these different questions. And Kawhi Leonard is averaging career highs. Again, Kawhi Leonard is averaging career highs in points at 27 and rebounds at like 7.8. Kawhi Leonard also is now tied for, or sorry, he's in second behind Vince Carter for the most consecutive games with at least 20 points. The record, Vince Carter did it twice at 23. Kawhi Leonard's streak is currently at 21. Again, consecutive games with at least 20 plus points. So think about where people's mindsets were at the beginning. And Masai's watching this. He sees them. Again, Masai wants to keep Kawhi Leonard. And what's the best way to try to keep Kawhi Leonard? Winning. And how do you win? With stars. So if there's a chance to get another star to try to pair with Kawhi Leonard, I'm pretty sure Masai Ujiri is going to try to do it. Uh, let's see. Someone says the plan of making the rest of the team other than Harden backfired break big time. I don't know. Was that the game plan? I don't know if that was a game plan. I feel like maybe they focused on a lot. Oh, I, they focused a lot on Harden and kind of, you know, obviously you'd rather force Austin Rivers. I was, keep wanting to say Austin Matthews, but obviously I mean Austin Rivers, who's way worse of a basketball player than Austin Matthews as a hockey player. But You'd rather have Austin Rivers force shots. You'd rather have Eric Gordon shoot deep shots as well. Like Eric Gordon, 2 of 13 from 3, 8 of 22 field goals, right? Those are terrible shooting percentages. All that happened was these guys cleaned up the paint and scored a lot of points in the middle. And that's the difference in the game. More comments. Can't trust any of them. Wow. Wow. Uh, someone says, Lowry played like ass on national TV again. Not a good look for Kyle Lowry in this game, that's for sure. Uh, someone else says, it's a problem when Fareed is beating your team. Yeah, again, Kenneth Fareed is someone off the scrap heap. Like, he had a bad ending in Denver where he wasn't really playing. They traded him to Brooklyn. He couldn't really get minutes in Brooklyn, which is weird because it's not like Brooklyn is a world beater. He should be able to try to find minutes there, but... Ends up getting bought out, and now he's in Houston. And because they're so depleted, he bas- he has to he has to start. Kenneth Reed played 38 minutes, right? More comments here on Instagram. Lowry and Fred took stupid shots. I totally agree. Fred didn't do a really good job of leading the bench unit when they came in. The bench unit kind of struggled. The offense really broke down. They weren't running plays. And once guys aren't moving... And I mean the guys that don't have the ball. Once they're not moving, the guy with the ball now figures, okay, now it's on me. I got to dribble breakdown and try to get my shot off, right? And that's not good offense. And the Rockets were super long, super athletic, and they were really clogging the paint on Freddie, stopping him from driving to the lane, where normally he can get in the lane and try to get in a tough lay-in, but he couldn't even get that far because... The defense was just there. Not a good look. Uh, More bigging up of Kenneth Fareed. This person says Fareed is a beast. Why is everyone sleeping on him? I don't know anything about the Fareed situation, but I feel like once you burn bridges in multiple places, maybe there could be an issue within the locker room that he's just not easy to deal with or something. I don't know. I don't know, but it's definitely a weird situation. Because he can obviously play. No? Uh, someone says, why did DeLon get benched? Again, I don't know if anything has come out on DeLon right since we started doing the podcast. But as of the end of the game, nobody's really said anything in terms of why DeLon Wright didn't play. I know Nick Nurse spoke already, so maybe Nick Nurse uh, commented on this in the post game. I'll check as we continue this podcast, as we figure out like what happened to DeLon Wright and why he didn't play, but still, at the end of the day, with the Raptors that were on the court, things should have turned out a little bit better. Just my opinion. Just my thoughts, man. Right or wrong. 
sound feeling at the time. Is that the line? That's the J line? Yeah. I didn't mess that up. My point is, though, if you're the Toronto Raptors, things are tough. You're going to have nights like this where you don't deserve to win, and yet they almost pulled it out, right? Not a good look. A lot of turnovers. A lot of just, like, even Kawhi. Kawhi had a lot of weird turnovers, too. Uh, More comments here, though, from Instagram. We can't rebound. One, we can't rebound. Two, Norm needs to run with the starters because he's the only person who can create his own shot. Uh, Three, we can't beat any good teams on the road. We need home court to go to the finals. Um, There's a lot in there. But let's see here. Norm, I think think the move here, right, in the big boy games is you have to just shorten the bench. Or pull the trigger a lot sooner when you know that the bench didn't have it. Because that went on for a while early in the first quarter, started the second quarter, where the bench was there and they couldn't even get shot attempts up, much less make shots. It was a huge scoring drought for the Raps where things just weren't going well at all, right? The Rockets just took that early punch and they just kept going and going. The Ra- the Raptors started 0 of 7 from three-point land. Meanwhile, the Rockets had 26 points in the paint, and this is in the second quarter, right? So picture that. You're trying to shoot threes and you're missing terribly. Meanwhile, the other team that can shoot threes is just feasting on you inside. It's a weird sport sometimes, no? It's a very weird sport. But hey, basketball, we love it all the same. And a good night for Houston. It's crazy to see the run that not only James Harden is on, but also just what he's able to do with his team because they're winning games. That's a very good win by the Rockets against the Toronto Raptors, a top team in the NBA. It's a very good win. And if you're the Houston Rockets, you got to be feeling really good about yourself, right? Because at the end of the day, they're only running like eight guys. And so when you get up to a lead being like 20 or whatever it was, I think 22 was the most that it got to. But when you end up having such a big lead and now you only run eight guys, those guys have to start pacing themselves. And maybe that's why the Raptors runs would keep coming, right? I don't know. It was just a weird, weird game. And again, I think the game turned in the second half when they didn't pull the plug on the bench. And I looked up, the score was 22. The Raptors were down 22 points, and somehow C.J. Miles and Greg Monroe were still on the floor. That can't happen. It can't. And we were shown why that can't happen because we saw the top tier that the starting unit or the majority of the starting unit played with when they were on the court. Let's try to get some more comments here because a lot of you guys wrote in and I want to make sure that I try to get to everyone. This from Instagram. Shout out to the bench for playing for playing at a pathetic level to their competition. It's true. The bench didn't have it today for sure. And how many times can you run it back where, oh, we're going to have another bench meeting? Because that happened before, right? It was after the same... Actually, if I remember correctly, it was after the San Antonio game. And now look, here we are. Raptors playing in Texas yet again and struggling. Bench nowhere to be found. Uh, More comments here. Uh, Do we need to explain what happened at the end of the game? I don't know. That was just really odd. The turnovers the Raptors kept getting, they were knocking down threes, basically just scrambling to shoot threes, and it actually worked. I don't know how that happened. And with all the crazy good shots you were getting, somehow on the last play, we were able to draw up a play, draw up something, anything, and they just went pick and roll to try to get Kawhi to shoot a three over James Harden. Yeah, I don't know. But hey, again, this is only what? Game 52? Game 51 of the Raptor season? So, I mean, at the end of the day, still have a great record. Things are still fine. Kawhi Leonard is healthy. He told us so much this morning, right? Kawhi had a, an interesting media availability this morning where he was talking about just his overall health, but also how kind of pleased he was that the Raptors have been on the same page with him in terms of 
bringing them along slowly, allowing them to sit out on back to backs, you know, allowing them to do certain things because as he pointed out, he didn't really play full court five on five until training camp. So before training camp, it would have been when he was actually on the floor in January. So he went a full year essentially without playing full on five on five basketball. So as, as Kawhi stated earlier in shoot around, He's not just going to go and like wear down his body. So I understand. Take a year, chill, make it all happen. And then, of course, you know, whenever he is eligible to go and do that, it's just leverage so that he can stay here and make more money. That's all. It's a shady game, but you just got to make sure you're on the right side. <laughs> more comments. Refs are gross. I don't know what other possession you can go through in life. Oh, sorry. What other profession you can go through in life and make that much? Oh, sorry. And make that much mistakes and not get fired. In It's a ref. Most of them have... Do Are NBA refs full-time? I think NBA refs are full-time, right? I was thinking of the NFL refs because the story came out that NFL refs, um, they're not full-time. And they have other jobs. <laughs> More comments. In my opinion, Nurse's offense is still a little too loose. Raptors aren't t talented enough to run an offense like that. I don't know what that even means, really. Yes, the offense still needs some work. There's a lot of the dribble handoff going on at the top of the key between the guards. That's kind of just trying to get someone lost in screens and hope that someone's open. But I'm not even mad at that because that's just involving everyone within the offense everyone's kind of running around there's not someone just standing still i'm for that i think that makes sense uh let's see what else i don't get why you uh i don't get why you defend a nick nurse everything wrong i'm hearing seems to be about coaching my question to you what is wrong seriously the raptors are in second in the Eastern Conference. They are 36 and 15 this year. Again, 36 and 16 this year. That's 20 games over 500. I don't know. I'm not going to sit here and say that Nick Nurse is having a bad year. Or Nick Nurse, or Nick Nurse is a problem. I'm not saying that. He just didn't have a good game. And that happens. Uh, someone says, I just want to see Kawhi hit one game winner. He has so many chances this season. Now, if you're talking about that argument or that conversation, I could be here for that conversation because I understand on the very last second, he's missed a bunch of shots or turned over the ball or just hasn't gotten that one at the buzzer to go down. And it happens, you know. Am I worried about Kawhi not being clutch? No, because I trust that he's good enough and I know that it's a make or miss league. So a lot of the time, when you have your last play, your your best player taking those end of game shots, it's just make or miss. Because all those dudes at the top of their game are able to get their shot off whenever they want. Uh, next comment here on Twitter. In big games, it's Kawhi and Green. Then, then there's everybody else. Straight trash. <laughs> I'm Again, I'm not calling anybody trash. I just think that the way that this uh, this comment comes across, I see it in no sense that you know you can trust Danny Green and Kawhi Leonard for their their championship pedigree. Let's say, right? Um, let's see what else is going on here on Instagram. Lots more comments. Nick Nurse is going to be the reason Kawhi leaves. I don't think that's true. From everything I can gather, they have a pretty good relationship, and. Kawhi has no problems in Toronto yet. I mean, even if we're talking about how cold it was this week, I'm pretty sure we all were talking about how cold it was this week. So, yeah. Uh, someone here says, said it before and I'll say it again. The DeRozan stank still in the locker room. Five years of Lowry and DeRozan regime has created a locker room of complacency. These guys are mentally weak. Wow. it's a lot there. That's a lot. That's a lot. Uh, let's see what else is going on here. 
Uh, Emma says, rest of the team struggling slash getting burnt out without another big score to share the load with Kawhi and lead aggressively. And it just shows up better. It shows up in better teams. It's true. But yeah, thanks for joining me, guys. I mean, I didn't even anticipate this podcast to go this long, but with all these people here, a lot of your comments, I always try to get to them, right? So hopefully this was kind of therapeutic, let's say, right? Hopefully you got to release a little, get some get some of those bad feelings out about this Toronto Raptors loss because it was an ugly game. It was an ugly game. And they came back multiple times. But again, in basketball, it, it is a game of runs. But when you have to spend so much energy just trying to get back in the game to try to get it to nine points at halftime, it's going to be tough for you to then have those fresh legs at the end of the game now when it's winning time and when you need to get over the hump. Also, they just need Kyle Lowry to be Kyle Lowry, the all-star. That's really what this team needs. Because with that, that team's going to the finals. Without that, or some like Brand X bootleg version of that, that, you know, might be unhealthy or a little banged up, that's not a good look for the Raptors. They will not win if that's the case. Uh, Let's see. There's some more comments here. A lot of people on instagram keep that going this is just awesome you guys really make the show right especially especially when it's just me doing the podcast it really helps that i can see the regulars here that are having a great conversation it continues to go and here's a comment it's the second half of the season the cinderella story is over we are exposed wow there's a lot there there's a lot there I don't think that's true. I still think this is a good team. I still think, you know, even though Kyle was missing shots, I was happy that he was taking those shots. So I'm going to trust the overall, you know, Kyle Lowry didn't just lose his shot. That's just me. Uh, Len on Instagram says, I agree. Pascal gets tunnel vision sometimes, and then he forces his shot. Another comment, The it's the second half. Oh, no, that's the same comment. I just scrolled back down for some reason. Uh, someone says, I'm on the trade Siakam bandwagon now. Kawhi bought a new house. He out. Let's talk about Kawhi's house, guys. It's not a thing. The LA Times clickbaited everyone because it's the LA Times and it's a newspaper and newspapers don't make money anymore. So they're trying to get into the online game like 10 years too late. <laughs> right? But here we are. The New York Times puts out this article saying that Kawhi Leonard bought a new home in Southern California. Here's the thing. Southern California is a big place. Kawhi Leonard is from the San Diego area. And you know where he bought a house? In the San Diego area. Do you know how far away that is? It's like hours away from Los Angeles. Do you know who else lives in San Diego? Norman Powell's family. Remember, we bring this up all the time. Norm Powell's family, also from San Diego, they've, they've been trying to, you know, no, I think they've already known Kawhi's family just through basketball circles. So now you're at a point where, hey, it could be beneficial. Even though it would be more beneficial if Norm went back to the norm from two or three games from now. But hey, if somehow he's able to play a role in keeping Kawhi, whatever, Norm, do what you do. Uh, I think... We're seeing this here a lot. Someone says the lack of a consistent second score has been exposed since Kyle Lowry's first shooting slump. That, my friends, is really, really, really what has happened to the Toronto Raptors. They don't have a second score. I thought it would be Kyle Lowry, and I thought a healthy Kyle Lowry would be that guy, but I don't think we're seeing a healthy Kyle Lowry. Uh, Let's see. Someone said the Pacers game was a final nail. This team is a second round exit at best. Here's the thing. Masai is not going to just chill on this. Masai Ujiri is watching the same game you guys are. As much as people are upset about what's happening, know this. Masai is watching and he's just as frustrated himself. So he's not going to stand pat come trade deadline. He's trying to make moves too. Just wait and see. Just wait and see. Uh, more comments. Fred is not a good playmaker. I don't understand why DeLon did not play. 
he is the better playmaker of the two. I like both of them playing together. I just think they both give a good option, a, a good look. And I'd much rather see minutes be thrown to DeLon Wright with that second unit than CJ Miles. But again, I also think save that stuff for, you know, the the I don't even want to say the Orlando Magic because they're better at times. But like the Chicago Bulls, the Memphis Grizzlies, the Phoenix Suns, right? Save those lineups for that. CJ can work on his shot there. Just my opinion. Just my opinion. Uh, someone says, hey, bro, thanks. And thanks for the shout out last episode. And I tuned in my battery and I, tu- I tuned in and battery died. <laughs> That's a tough one. That's a tough one. I feel bad for you, but salute again. Uh, who is this? Shouts to you for sure for tuning into. Uh, more comments though. Also, Nurse, love him, but last set was terrible. Kawhi should have drove and kicked. Bad design in my opinion. I'll give the Raps credit for ha- hanging around. That's what I'm going to say, and that's how I'm going to end this podcast, because I agree. The lone bright spot I'm going to give the Toronto Raptors is they kept fighting. They kept pushing and pushing and pushing and made this a two-point game at the very end where they could have just rolled over just like in San Antonio, but instead they kept playing, and I'll give them respect for that. But anyways, the Toronto Raptors lose to the Houston Rockets 121-119. Again, Raptors lose 121-119. James Harden continues his scoring streak even though he did not get to 50 even though he didn't get to the over-under that was set to 42 before the game. <laughs> he finished with 35, but a 9 of 25 shooting, 2 of 13 shooting from 3, and of course, 15 of 15 from free throw land. Damage was done by Kenneth Fareed. Kenneth Fareed, the whole game, P.J. Tucker in the first half. That's what I'd say. I will say... This as well, though, as I look through this chat, a lot of Raptors fans seem to be a little bit nervous. A little bit nervous. Someone says, I'm glad to actually see cheesed Sheldon. Hold on. Am I, like, have I not been cheesed during other games before? Have I not admitted that the Raptors have played terrible when they've played terrible or terribly? (laughs) I think so. But anyways... Appreciate the, sh- the shout out or the call out. What I want to hear, though, is the next time that you think I'm making excuses, let me know. Because I'm, I'm totally here to hear the conversation. Uh, let's see. I don't know why the raps slug off in the beginning of the games. <sighs> if, if Nick Nurse had the answer to that, man, this team might be undefeated. Uh, here's a comment. What do you guys think about bringing T. Ross home we can use a player like him, ex- expiring contract, shouldn't take much to get him. <laughs> I don't want T. Ross coming back to Toronto, man. I don't know about I don't know about that. I mean, depends on what you'd have to give up to get him. And the inspiring the expiring contract is a thing too that makes it a little bit interesting. But overall, no. That T. Ross era, let let that be. Let that live already as a thing. Uh a, Another comment, a championship contending team should be able to close out a game like that. Um, If you talk about the Raptors being the championship contending team, I would say a championship contending team doesn't put themselves in that situation against a Houston Rockets team that plays with one all-star and then other guys who, I mean, P.J. Tucker wasn't in the NBA for a while, right? He started in the NBA, then went overseas and came back. All I'm saying is the level of talent on the Houston Rockets that Toronto Raptors team should be able to win the game. A lot's going on. People still want to have the conversation about what's Masai going to do. Um, People also talking about what's wrong with Kyle Lowry. And again, I'm warning you, this Kyle Lowry thing is going to be for the entire, entire season. But just letting you guys know, let me know what you think the lone bright spots were. Wherever you listen to this podcast, just get to the comment section, whether it's on SoundCloud or iTunes or Google Play. Give me a shout there. Like and subscribe. And as I've been telling you guys, Bomani Jones says it all the time, right? 
rate us, give us five stars, because if you only give us four, going to be forced to think that you're just a hater, right? There's a lot of comments. Shout out to all you guys for coming in and giving the comments and making this podcast go tonight on a Friday night after a very tough loss. Raptors fan base is upset, doesn't like this loss at all. I will say I I don't like the no-shows in big boy games. I don't like, like, when a team comes out and you're getting run out of the gym to start the game, that shows me a lack of preparation, like you weren't prepared for the start of the game. And you saw that from the Raptors tonight. Overall, I think Nick Nurse is still a good coach. He's just a first-year coach, and you have to get used to how you work your rotations, right? How you're going to sub guys in and out. How you're going to play in certain situations because different games provide a different challenge. But one of those challenges is figuring out what you do as a team and trying to make the other team adjust, not having you adjust to the other team. Does that make sense? Anyways, guys, thanks for joining me. And again, tune into the podcast, iTunes, SoundCloud, Google Play, YouTube. Like and subscribe there. Shouts to the YouTube people for sure. And again, as always, you can tune in to the Wrap It Up podcast, which is live on Twitter at each and every Raptor game, except for Super Bowl Sunday and on Christmas. But other than that, every Toronto Raptors game. So tune in questions on instagram follow up at sheldon alexander and you know what check out our ball on blast podcast you'll wherever you're you're listening to this podcast if you just scroll a little you'll find episode 52 of the ball on blast podcast it's titled i'll name my starters later obviously the nba announced their all-star starters me and my guy andrew webster we went through all the all-star rosters who we think would fill out each roster Uh, We discussed everything from Kawhi to James Harden, Boogie being back with the Warriors, Russ being Russ. And then at the end of each podcast, we do a little pop culture topic just about whatever else is going on. Normally, it's like a music review or maybe a film review or something. This week, we talked about the Netflix Fire Festival doc. So check us out. Ball on Blast podcast. Again, it's wherever you're listening to this podcast. Just scroll a little and you'll find that. Shouts to all you guys for supporting the brand that is on Blast. Really appreciate you guys. I do. And continue to have this conversation because it doesn't stop. You can always hit me up on Twitter. You can always hit me up on Instagram or in the comments section. We're here. We're here to talk, Raptors fans. After wins, after losses, for the rest of the season. Because right now, the countdown, someone brought it up. The countdown of how many games left we have to watch and enjoy Kawhi Leonard at the peak of his powers. Whew. It's running slim. So enjoy it now. That's all I got to say about that. Until Sunday, I used to pray for times like this to rhyme like this. This is the Wrap It Up On Blast Raps Post Game Show. As always, unpolished and unapologetic. Until next time. See ya. Boom, blast.